you? You know, you can only hint so many times and be ignored before it becomes a problem. I made, just made them aware that they didn't have a drummer in the first service. Thinking they would say, Brother Allen. And look at them go. That's all right. I was in the back practicing. Man, we're excited to be here this morning. Uh, yeah, a couple things came together for Pastor Travis and his family. and So anyway, I think they went to watch the boy play ball yesterday, uh, a practice game or scrimmage or something. Anyway, uh, yeah, excited about that. We're going to be out of town uh, Thursday and Friday. We're going to district assembly. Uh, if you were churched, you would know how excited we are about that. The best part about that is the trip, because we, myself and Pastor Travis and Pastor Brian, will uh, be in a vehicle for five, six hours. And <laughs> Let us pray. Let us pray. Lord, Lord bless us. Man, it's, we're really in, in a weird time. I don't know if you, uh, I don't know where you are. I was, uh, I, I went down the rabbit hole. Uh, when I was nine years old, uh, we <laughs> this is how stupid it is. Ready? How many remember when they went to the moon, that space launch? Am I the only one that remembers that? Y'all seen stories, right? Y'all know it's true. Well, <laughs> we was watching it on TV. And my grandpa's best friend came over. His name was Bud Porter. And Bud Porter said, Ace, that's what he called my grandpa. He said, Ace, you know that's all fake. <laughs> and my grandpa said, well, it ain't fake. I'm sitting here watching it on the TV. <laughs> and so Bud walks up to the TV, and he goes, look right there. Simulation. <laughs> you know what that means? It's fake. Man, I crawled down a rabbit hole and go down there. So, y'all know what the weekend is, right? The Death Star, my wife kept saying, it's the Devil's Comet. No, the Death Star is coming. And the eclipse is coming. Did y'all know that? I don't know if y'all know this or not, but we had an eclipse last year. I know because I was at the farmer's market and I watched it. And nobody died. <laughs> Electricity didn't go off. I took out my phone and tried to take a picture of it. Can't take a picture of the eclipse, by the way. So anyway, we're, we're in this season where uh, I, uh, oh my, I, I saw a hello, Facebook. This stuff is documented. First service is so much more fun because you don't have to worry about what you say. Anyway, I was, I was looking this morning. One of the first things I saw this morning and man, I don't, I don't want to pick sides, and I don't want you to think I'm on one side or another. But anyway, Tucker Carlson put out a, 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 a little video, and it said, don't take the black pill. <laughs> Can I get some gentlemen to help him out? What he was saying is, don't, don't be consumed. Don't be caught up in this fear. Don't be caught up in this end of the world, this night. You know what? If it's the end of the world, okay. And if it's not the end of the world, okay. I was, in, I was working in Midland in, on, on July 7th, 1977. That's 7 7 Seven, seven. And you know what that is, right? You know what that is? That's the Lord's day. And my grandma called me and she said, are you all right with Jesus? And I said, who is this? <laughs> you know. How did you get my number? Because, you know, when you're stoned, everybody sounds the same. <laughs> and she said, 
Because the Lord's day is coming, and if you ain't all right with Jesus, you're going to hell. Man, I almost quit smoking. <laughs> I, I was just looking for all the help I could get. You know, well, I, I won't smoke today. I don't know. I mean, maybe this will be a good... And, and seven, eight, seven, seven came right around, and nothing changed. I'm convinced of this. I trust the infinite wisdom of my God. And he will come on his appointed day. And I will be ready and available and looking for him. But until he comes, my assignment is to occupy. Right? Not isolate, occupy this world that he has placed me in so that he will be glorified. Because that's the only reason you and I are here, is that he might be glorified. I'm going to be today in the book of uh, John chapter 20. John chapter 20, this is lectionary uh, text, John chapter 20, 19 through 31. Probably won't get through all of it, but I'm going to get what I can. John chapter 20, verse 19. I was excited when, when I saw that it was text was from John. Because John is, is so much about you and I. Right? Uh, Matthew was about the Jews. Mark uh, was, was more about the Gentiles. Luke was very much speaking into the Greek community. John is speaking to the believer, to you and I, those of us who are the ones whom he, Christ, loved. That is us. John chapter 20, verse 19. Let me read all the way through it, and I'll come back. John chapter t uh, beginning with 19, verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, excuse me, on the evening of that first day, I read it wrong first time, service too. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the door locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood amongst them. Let me give you a little context. The text we're going to look at today is eight days. It goes from the Resurrection Sunday till the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. It is a week. Why is that important? Eight days. Eight days is a kingdom number. Eight is a kingdom number. This is in reference to the kingdom of God. It's about a transition from one kingdom to another. You notice I didn't say Easter. That's because we have people amongst us in the world today that said, now you you worship, you, you celebrate Easter, you're worshiping the god Estra. Okay, Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday, the world allows you and I to talk about the resurrection of our Messiah. Right? That he, Christ, was crucified, buried, placed in a grave, and is alive today. Man, he is not a ghost, he is not a spirit. He is a live, living God. They not only allow us, they expect that. But in this text, it was on that first day that he, Christ, made himself known to this woman named Mary Magdalene. Okay? Now, it makes you wonder. I'm looking around. I'm taking a head count. <laughs> men and women were kind of balanced. So, okay, men, I need you to step up. Why didn't he show himself to a man first? Amen? Come on, man. You're killing me here. It just seems like it would have made more sense. Why didn't he show himself to a man first? Why didn't he? Because the men weren't looking for him. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, man, that stung a little bit right here, didn't it? Oh, my God. Because the men weren't looking for him. If you look at this, if you go back, this talks about Mary Magdalene. She thought he was a gardener, but he spoke her name. And she said, oh, Rabona, Rabona. Man, that's, that is an interment teacher, one that I, desire, that I follow and love, Rabona. And she called out to him, and he said, hey, you're going to have to let me go. I'm going back to my father. Well, if you stay, if you look in Luke about this story, the next thing we see is there's these two guys going to Emmaus. <laughs> Jesus walks up beside them and says, what's up? They say, oh, d didn't you hear? Hear what? Everything's happening in Jerusalem. And Jesus is like, what happened? 
tell me, please. Just wanting to hear, wanting to know. And they shared the story of Jesus. The word says that he took, and when he broke the bread, they saw him, and they knew who he was. And he disappeared from their midst. Scripture goes on to say that they ran back seven miles. They ran back to where the disciples were, and they were with the disciples when this text starts. John says, John doesn't tell us the two were there, but Luke does. John says, on the evening of that first day, when the disciples were together, with the door locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood amongst them. A couple of things in that. This word locked is a word of permanence. It's actually locked in the perfect tense. What does that mean? That means that they were locked in and they had no intention of ever leaving. You see, the world would like for you to lock yourself away, to isolate yourself from the world, to keep your mouth shut, mind your business, and stay out of their way. Just lock yourself in. The word says that the door was locked, and he stood, came and stood among them. Truth you need to know. Christ is not bound by natural law. <coughs> There's an eclipse. Okay. The Death Star. Death Comet. What a devil's comet. What do they call it? Devil's Comet. Comes around every 71 years. I wasn't here for the last one. But as far as I know, nobody died. Right? What was 71 years ago? 53? I don't think everybody died in 53. Okay, it's coming again. You know, they talk about it's coming close. Well, how close is it coming? 2.3 light years? I don't know, a long ways. <laughs> Nobody died. And our God is not bound by nature, nature's law. The word says that he passed through the wall. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Before the cross, had Jesus walked up, he would have hurt his nose. He would have bumped his, like you and I, because he was fully human. But today, our Messiah, our Lord, is not bound by natural law. Second thing is he is not bound by your personal actions. Amen. You think, yeah, but if you knew what I did, he knows. What, do you think he's going to go, you did what? When? <laughs> Who else knows about it? <laughs> well, why didn't y'all tell me? Angels, angels, get over here. Well, did y'all see him do, nobody, nobody told me. He's not bound by your actions, good or bad, nor is he bound by your attitude. Oh, you got to hear me on this one. Boy, if you just knew what, what kind of a sad sack I am. <laughs> you think he don't know? <laughs> Jesus is in the background singing, Don't let it bring you down. It's only castles burning. <laughs> Man, he knows you internally. I think some, sometimes he comes along and pokes you in the belly button just to see if you'll giggle. <laughs> you know? That's the Pillsbury Doughboy in case y'all miss it. I'll be here all week. <sighs> He is not bound by natural law, by your personal actions, nor by your attitude. The word says that he came and stood amongst them, and he said, peace be with you. Amen. Three different times in this text, he cries, says, peace be with you. Why is that important? I remember some time back, I said, I am at peace with God and man. That's just two. I'm at peace with God and man. I, I tell you when this happened, I fell and hit my head, thought I was going to die. I was convinced I was going to die because everything I knew had gone away. I called my wife. Somehow I got on the phone. And I said, I know you're my wife. Something really bad has happened. And she said, where are you? And I said, hmm, I know you are my wife. Something really bad has happened. And she said, what were you doing? I said, hmm. I know you're my wife. Something really bad has happened. 
Wasn't long after that, 911 called. She apparently told me, hang up. When they call, hit the red button. 911 called, and I remember some of the conversation. And they, they asked me, they said, uh, what color's your truck? And I said, I, I don't know, where is my truck? And they said, are you in your truck? And I said, I don't know, do you want me to get out and look? <laughs> she said, no sir, you probably should stay in the building, or in the, in the truck. Okay. And she asked me, are there buildings near you? And I said, there, I'm, I'm sitting beside a building. And she said, is there writing on the building? And I realized I could not read. She said, I'll stay on the line until help arrives. And I remember I thought this was funny. I said, that's a really good idea. <laughs> Even as I was dying, I was still hilarious. <laughs> that's a really good idea. Some moments later, a cop knocked on my window and he said, are you Mr. Wallace? And I said, depends. And he said, on what? I said, whether you're here to help or not. <laughs> he said, I'm here to help. And I said, yes. <laughs> woke up in the hospital. Apparently, I woke up and I had allergy bands all up my wrist. And apparently everything they asked me about, I told them I was allergic to it. <laughs> I think I was just afraid they was going to give me a shot. <laughs> uh, still on my record, there's so many drugs I can't get now. I'm allergic to that. <laughs> but I, to be at peace with God, to be at peace with God, I, 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 is I, the, things, the things I remember, and this was over most of a day, and I said, God, if it's my time, I'm ready. But if we're voting, I vote no. I was at peace with God. And I was at peace with man. I, was, I, I, I knew that my girls would be all right. I knew my wife was okay. I knew those things. But I think at some level I wasn't at peace with myself. You see, at peace with God and at peace with man, but are you at peace with you? This word peace, it reminds me of, of Jesus on the cross, and, and he said, it is finished. You remember that? It is finished. And to stop and to look at what that word means... It is finished. Uh, to, be, to be finished could be the end of a war. You know this. The enemy of God desires to kill you. You know that, right? And he, God, is fighting for your life. Christ is saying the war is over. The war is over. The enemy no longer has privilege to kill you. Man, he can take your life, but he will not take your soul. The war is over. A finish can also be applied to a, to a legal thing, to a, a court case. Right? To, be, to, to resolve a court case. We have an advocate. He, Christ, stands at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and for me. The enemy comes, the accusers. You see, that's his assignment. His native tongue is liar. He stands before God and he accuses you, but your advocate stands up and says, no, 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 no. See, I have testimony. I have testimony because he has testified. He has surrendered. He has, he has looked upon the snake and said, I put my, that goes back to Christ said, except that I be lifted up as a snake was lifted up in the wilderness. You see, we look upon Jesus and we say, I put my faith in him, not in my own works. I put my faith in him no matter what the enemy says. I've declared it. I spoke it with my mouth. I have testified. It is documented in the heavens. And my advocate defends me against all accusers. But the third way that this finished is paid in full. You see, 
You owed a debt you could not pay. You owed a debt you could not pay. And that debt required your life. You see, only death would satisfy that debt. And he died, and we say, well, he died for you. No, no, he didn't die for you. He died instead of you. There's a difference. He died instead of you so that you don't have to die. See, that's what finished looks like. That's what at peace with God looks like. That's what at peace with man looks like. You got a problem with your brother, get over you. Man, get over you. You're not that important. You need to go find that brother and say, man, forgive me. Forgive me. Yeah, but you don't know what he did to me. I don't care what he did to you. I hope you don't do it to me. Because I, No, because I walk just like you do, right? And I don't want to be bitter. You know what bitterness is, right? That's for me to drink poison and hope you die. That's all bitterness is. The only person that's poisoning is you. But you know what if I say as an act of my will, I choose. I choose. I, I've got, I, can say, I can say this with authority because i got an ex-wife. <laughs> I love her. I love her, man. We are, we are best of friends now. Don't get me wrong. But you know what? There was a day in my life when I had to say as an act of my will, I choose to forgive. And the enemy goes, yeah, you still wish she was dead. And I went, I know. Oh, this is on the video. <laughs> but I choose to forgive. And you know what it did? You know what it did? And it changed me. And you may not know this. I'm just saying. It may have been that I was the unlovable one. I know. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. I don't believe it. Do you? I don't believe it. It changed me once I got at peace with man. And you know what? I couldn't be at peace with myself until I got at peace with God and at peace with man. And I couldn't be at peace with God until I got at peace with myself because I realized that I was made in his image. Right? And he loves me desperately. And that's what the peace, he said, my peace, my peace I bring to you. God said, peace be unto you. And I am so out of time. Oh, sh this is terrible. We're going to get about three steps. Look at verse 20. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. First thing, first thing God brought was he brought his peace. The second thing he brought was his assurance. You ever wonder if you are where God wants you to be? All the time. All the time. Are you where God wants you to be? We came to Lubbock, and, and some of you know the story, but I'm going to share just pieces of it. We came to Lubbock, and, uh, man, we weren't sure what, if we were supposed to be here or not. And uh, we, we were looking for a house. We couldn't afford anything. And we had a cap on what we could afford, and uh, we made an agreement. We wouldn't look at anything we couldn't afford. So we looked at one. We couldn't. That was right at the top of our, our price bracket, and we hated it. It was terrible. And uh, Tonda came out of that house, and the house, she said, that's my house. Now, once again, God told it to a woman when there were two able-bodied men right there. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me either. He said, she said, that's my house. And I said, babe. And our realtor said, Tonda, we agreed. Don't look at nothing we can't afford. She goes, well, I'm just telling you, that's my house. <laughs> so we go on. Well, every time I would talk to Tonda for the next five weeks, she'd say, have you seen my house? I said, baby, that's not your house. She goes, that's my, God told me that's my house. I said, that wasn't God. <laughs> so that's how us men cover those things. That wasn't God. Finally, I said to the guy, I said, you know what? Let's go look at Tonda's house. It was to the point that he knew what house I was talking about. Let's go look at Tonda's house. He said, we agreed. And I said, you know what? Just show us that day, one hour before we looked at Tonda's house, they dropped a price, $40,000. That day. That day. $40,000. And so when we came to this place and we were here, and we came into a church that had, I don't know, 50 on a good day. We actually got up into the 70s, and we had grown it down to 13. 
Y'all do the math on that. <laughs> we rode it from 75 all the way down to 13. And I said, God, man, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'm walking in your will. And he said, go home and look at your house. Go home and look at your house. Go home and look and see what I did. You see, when he came in, he said, look here. Look at, my, look at my hands. Look at my side. And there was an assurance that was given to them. You need to be making foot. You need to be driving stakes in the ground so that you can remember. So when the enemy comes up and he lies to you, you can look back and you say, hey, let me show you what God did. Let me show you how God got me here. To have that assurance. Look at verse 22. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. He gave them not just peace, not just assurance, but he gave them the authority. The word, Acts chapter 1, says that by this, by the filling of the Holy Spirit, they will have authority to preach the gospel. He has given you the authority to preach the gospel. People say, by what authority? The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. How do you know? Because I am changed. I am changed, forever changed, when His Spirit entered into me. Well, when did it happen? It happened when I surrendered my life to Him. When I looked upon Him and was assured. You see, it comes back to the ABCs. The ABCs of your Christian walk. First, you accept what He's done. Secondly, you believe He did it for you. Third, you commit to follow Him. You see, that's when this authority comes into play. Because I've got those ABCs laid out in my life. And I know that He is working in me. And I can look out and I can see His hand <coughs> before me. He gave them the authority. The last thing it says, verse 23, If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. <coughs> If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. He has also given you the ability. I don't believe, I don't believe that you have the ability to forgive sin. I'm just going to say that. Brother, your sins are forgiven. I, that's, not, that's not mine to give. It's not mine. But it says, if you, right, isn't that right there? If, if is, doesn't, isn't that sense or because or isn't it a, a, a compromise? How about this? How about I can come up and say, you know what? According to my scripture, it says that if you will look upon him, that he'll forgive all your sins. Did you know in doing so, I am declaring forgiveness? But if you do not put your faith in him, you will not be forgiven. Forgived. Forgiven. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I'm, I'm a good person. Oh, good for you. <laughs> My grandma used to say there's going to be a whole lot of good people in hell. I used to say, yeah, but the church is full of hypocrites. And she said, well, you can go to church with them or hell with them. You just got to make a decision. You just got to decide. You and I have the privilege and the ability to declare the gospel because he, he has empowered us, not, not just the, God by his Holy Spirit. It's kind of funny because we're going to do it different. You see, he's going to use you and your gifts and your callings, your gifts and your talents. He's going to use me different. There are people that I can't speak to that you can, but you may. There are people that I can speak to that you can't. They won't hear you, because I don't know if you know this or not, but some of you are addicts and alcoholics. <laughs> I know. I hated to. I hated to point it out in front of everybody, but y'all been pretending. But you know what? There's brothers that you have. Man, you've got pocket change with them. You've been walking with them. Man, you did dope with them. you got pocket change with that brother. you got pocket change with that sister. And you can come up beside them. Man, you can speak the gospel. You have abilities that I don't have. 
we have the same authority through God and His Holy Spirit, but you've got an opportunity that I, I may never get Amen. until you bring them in this house. Amen. Man, it's funny to watch them come in. They think they're here for donuts and coffee. <laughs> And then once a month we trick them. <laughs> we get them to eat bread and drink juice. <laughs> oh, dude, dude. And you just declared the broken body of Christ. And you drank the sacrificial blood. Jesus is looking for you. <laughs> we used to, we can't do it anymore, but we used to call it the holy hound of heaven. <laughs> I can tell you, I tried to walk away from God, and he was a dog on a bone. Man, the Holy Spirit would not leave me alone. He chased me down until I surrendered. And that's, that's why I love, I, that's, I love most about communion. Is some people think it's crackers and juice. No, 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 no. A whole lot bigger than that. I want to move down. There's one more thing I want to share with you. I need you to move down to verse 27. We're going to close with this. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting. That, that word stop doubting is to be at war against faith. To be actively at war against believing making an active decision. It's not that you didn't believe. You have decided you won't believe. Now, it goes back up, and if you look at the text before it, now, Thomas called Didymus. You know, we don't know who his twin was. He's called the twin. I, one guy said this, and I'm, I'm kind of leaning into it. It's because, you know what? I may be his twin. You may be his twin. Thomas, called Didymus the twin, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples. The disciples came and said, we have seen the Lord. You see, they came and they witnessed. Well, glory to God. Jesus, 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 blessed and highly favored. Glory to God. That's a Christian today. In the world, the twin of Didymus says, unless... I see. It says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. you got brothers and sisters, you got friends and family who sit beside you and they just want to see Jesus manifest. They just one time want you to demonstrate grace. They want one time to see you forgive first. One time to apologize even when you're right. Amen. One time for you to be God the Father mm. in their presence. Mm. One time. <laughs> I, you know, my experience, man, because remember, I, man, I, 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 got, I encountered Christ. I got mad at God, and, and uh, I threw my Bible in my brother's face, and he threw his left <laughs> into my face. Apparently, I'm the one that got bruised. <laughs> but it wasn't until, and I've shared the story, so I won't share it again. But it wasn't until I saw Jesus' unconditional love manifest. Until I saw his hands pierced. Until I placed my hand in his side. When a brother of Christ came up beside me, unconditionally and declared me valuable. You see, I will not believe. I will not believe until I see grace manifest. You and I have friends and family who just need to see Jesus manifest. Last Sunday was Easter. They expected it. You see, it was easy on Easter. They expected it. But today it ain't. You have to make an active decision. You see, today if you declare Christ, you can't blame Easter. You have to declare the manifestation of God in your body. You have to declare the peace 
of God. The innermost peace. The fact that you're at peace with God. That you're at peace with man. And most of all, that you're at peace with yourself. Amen. And the only way that's His peace. And he through time has grown me and developed me to the point that I can truly say, that I can truly say, I love my God with all of my heart, mind, and soul. And I love my neighbor as myself. And I love me, not in a bad way. I love me as one made in the image of God, a fully devoted follower of Christ, that he has placed in this place Later today, he'll place me out there in that place. And tomorrow, he will place me somewhere else at another place. And they want to see his peace. Can we do that? Can you do that? It's his peace. Let's stand again. As we pray together, we start with this question. Who do we pray to? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Father God, we love you. Master, we love you as one body. Believers in your Son. Surrender, God, to your will and your way. We love you, God, for your, your love for us is demonstrated. So today we ask that you would accomplish all you have in mind. Master, in this time of fear that we would be the demonstrated peace of God to the world around us. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. Master, that, that's almost like saying, oh, well, God, you do you, because we trust the infinite wisdom of our loving Father. So accomplish all you have in mind. We trust you for that. Master, would you let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of our Heavenly Father, the peace of your sweet spirit be found in each of us and all of us today and forevermore. God, that that would be accomplished in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. In his name alone we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.